Hello everyone, I'm Kim Rowell, a Commissioner, Executive Producer and Managing Editor and have worked with the likes of the BBC, ITV, The Telegraph, Channel 4 and ITN Productions. I'm absolutely delighted to be hosting this next session for you at Kindfest 2023, for which we have been joined together with the Women of the Future podcast, part of the Women of the Future programme, a platform which is built to unlock a culture of kindness and collaboration among leaders and celebrate the successes of women, all led by the wonderful Pinky Lalani CBE DL. Joining me are two very special people, Polly Hara and Siki. In 2008, Polly identified a gap in service provision for women who have been or are at risk of being disowned and who require long-term support towards leading a successful, independent life without fear. As a result, she set up the Sharon Project, a specialist charity that supports South Asian women affected by abuse or persecution. Amongst her many accolades, Polly is an associate at the London Policing College, specialising in domestic abuse and harmful practice interventions, and also holds a master's degree in policing with a focus on investigating serious crime. On the 10th of December 2020, Polly developed and launched the Employers Domestic Abuse Covenant, which is the third cross-government supported UK covenant and the first ever covenant that addresses domestic abuse. Suki is a writer, director and humanitarian, best known for the Netflix original docuseries Singapore Social. She is also known for campaigning for freedom of expression within the performing arts in Singapore and for the award nominated short film I See Her, which has been officially selected for festivals, including the BAFTA and BIFA qualifying British Urban Film Festival. The film itself seeks to sensitively educate the public on taking action when they see signs of abuse in women and girls. It has been made in close collaboration with the Sharon Project. Oh, that was a long intro, but Suki and Polly have both been recognised as part of the Asian Women of Achievement Awards, which is part of the Women of the Future Awards, with Polly receiving a high commendation in 2013. Thank you both so much for joining me here today and apologies for the long intro, but it's wonderful to see you both. Wow, thank you for having us. Yeah, that was that was amazing. <laughs> that was okay. How do we follow that? that, was okay. <laughs> that was so Polly, to start with, can you tell me more about the work that you do, please? Yeah, absolutely. So the Sharon Project was set up about 15 years ago now to support women who'd left home and didn't know where to go. We also seek to inspire women by having leadership through leadership and programs, as well as educate through our schools and um, prevention work. So very much is a more holistic approach to make sure all women and girls feel safe and those who aren't safe have the wraparound holistic support they need to move forward. It's an incredible organisation and thank you personally for all the work that you do and have done and continue to do. But I'm really interested to learn how the collaboration with Suki came about and this amazing film project, I See Her. Absolutely. Well, I think it goes back at least 10 years when Suki and I sort of first met at Buckingham Palace um, following on from the Women of the Achievement Awards and immediately we connected, um, swapped details and stayed in touch. And very shortly after that, Suki came on board as a global ambassador for the charity. And from that moment to day, um, Suki has been working tireless to support the charity, to advocate for the rights of women and girls and really lend her voice to make sure that those who don't have a voice are heard in much wider spheres um, across the world. So been working with Suki for quite some time and then when Suki talked about creating this film um, we discussed it in so much as we wanted to make sure it was authentic that it was uh, as honest as it can be but also that it reflected the real life emotions and experiences of victims and survivors so it was a beautiful collaboration that brought both minds together. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah Suki tell us more about the inspiration and where the idea came from and how it's been working with Polly on this. Yeah that's that's thanks Polly um yeah we did indeed meet 10 years ago it seems astonishing to say that but um we did and and the moment we met we just connected on um a mutual desire to help um specifically 
um, women and girls. Um, but then again, because we're both South Asian, I think that was something as well that really resonated with us. So the film came about um, because I'd promised Polly 10 years ago that if ever I had the platform and the ability to do something, you know, global reaching for the Sharon Project, then I would do that. Well, 10 years later, thank you for being so patient with me. <laughs> um, after finally managing to get a sort of foothold within the entertainment industry, I had the opportunity to do this. And so, of course, for the first um, film that I wrote and directed, I was going to make that film um, in support of the Sharon Project. Um, Polly's work is incredible, what she does um, to help women who have been disowned, be that because of life choices they've made or because of forced marriage, um, is just unreal. I mean, she's so qualified and so humble. Um, I really wanted to be able to do her charity justice and also the victims and survivors that she supports. I wanted them to feel heard and seen. Yeah. Um, and actually the film, I was very keen to have it feature a survivor um, so that she could reclaim and reclaim her story and feel empowered, empowered by it. Um, the film was with that in mind, but it was also because we'd just come out of a pandemic and I'd noted myself that the figures in terms of abuse um, globally as a result of the pandemic had spiked. And indeed, there is unfortunately has been a marked increase in cases of abuse against women and girls. Um, and I felt a responsibility that we need to do something if we can. So whilst the film focuses on the storyline um, of the real life stories of survivors and victims who have been affected by issues that the Sharon Project supports, I hope it really resonates globally um, as a tool really to empower the public um, to do something when they see signs of abuse in girls happening in any women in any community, um, not just minoritized communities. Yeah, exa exactly that. And for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, there is a website where the film trailer, I think, is available. That's right, isn't it? But also, could you just quickly or briefly describe the narrative of the film and how you approached such a sensitive subject in trying to construct that and put it together? Yeah, I think um, it's something that just came to me because I struggled myself in, in my life through various things. I'm from a very, very strict family. And whilst it wasn't to the extent at all um, to the victims and survivors of um, cases that such, such of which Polly deals with, um, I understood the nuances of of a real life woman experiencing intense pain and how it's not once it's not just sort of one dimensional I think that oftentimes when you see kind of women experiencing abuse in films they're downtrodden incredibly sort of self-conscious vulnerable possibly portrayed as 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 weak and I didn't want to do that because I think we can be simultaneously incredibly broken down but also have hope and resilience and I really wanted to convey that so the storyline follows um, a woman who's being abused in a forced marriage um, although I didn't want to include shots of the husband and because I didn't want to give power to the perpetrator of abuse um, but throughout the film, you'll notice that she has this relationship with a vase of roses, white roses. And I think that was because in my darkest moments, I've often sought solace in pockets of beauty to give myself hope when I've felt really, really, really low. And I, I know what that feels like. And I wanted to show that even though the character Mina, um, she's experiencing such horrific abuse, um, she's still a woman who has a, a joy of gardening, who holds on to hope. Um, she's able to appreciate it. She she has other things going on in her, her lives. Her abuse doesn't define her. It's something that's happening to her. She's a multifaceted person outside of that. So that was kind of the storyline. And mm. then in part, it was also inspired by living in Los Angeles with my neighbour Sam and our black and brown stories and really supporting each other in solidarity. I wanted to grab a, 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 a smidge of that into, um, and shout out to Sam, who's an incredible activist herself. <laughs> um, but I really wanted to grab a smidge of that relationship and that sort of um, sisterhood 
between our communities and and put that as well in the film because that's kind of my lived experience I suppose yeah exactly that and we'll come back to some of the sub themes in just a sec but Polly I was curious to know what you think or what you have thought about media depictions of domestic abuse because they can be quite sensationalized can't they absolutely and quite often they focus on the physical aspect although more recently now we're talking more about coercive control and we're talking about non-physical violence such as economic abuse um, stalking harassment which might not physically impact somebody but emotionally has a much longer impact and devastating impact on their lives so whilst the media are getting better I think there are still areas that could be better addressed such as what does a victim or a survivor look like and again the characterization around the racialization particularly of certain women are seen in certain ways whereas what this film did was actually change that and what Suki was talking to is the resilience of survivors is often not recognized they're often only viewed if they are meek or scared or, or frightened where 90 percent of, of violence against women and girls in the UK is by men so again it was really lending itself to really magnify the, the severity and the scope of the issue here. And it's, it's something that's so hard, as you say, to convey, particularly when it's the trauma and the emotional sustenance of, or the impact of something something like this. But Suki, coming back to what we were talking about as sub-themes for this film, the film has no sound. It has um, a choir and you hear the atmos of there's people walking upstairs and things like that. And the only language is actually sign language. And also there's another part of the the neighbor who is potentially able to rescue the domestic abuse um woman living next door part of part of the reason or the subliminal reason why she doesn't is because of a fear potentially of black women or black people generally being or feeling able to report crimes to the police so clearly these were conscious decisions that you made to incorporate into the film but could you maybe just talk us through how you approached that and how you thought or how you handled it again the sensitivity of it and the importance of getting it right yeah um actually i worked with um an activist um who's getting um youths and adults um who have been wrongly incarcerated out of the jail system in america she's an incredible black activist called jimmy land um and she's been a very good friend of mine and we speak often on this topic about um how um especially women who have witnessed a crime or have seen a crime their their hesitancy uh, um to get the authorities evolved. I mean, it's obviously prevalent in America, unfortunately, and I feel like it does happen globally. Um, so I really wanted to include that just because I think um, sometimes with sort of South Asian stories or South Asian abuse stories, um, very often you kind of have a sort of white saviour role mm. coming to the rescue or the neighbour notices something happening in a quote-unquote Indian community and I think that um, that's that's kind of something that I really wanted to move away from um, and so in order to portray obviously the character the next door neighbour correctly um, and be able to just cover those sensitivities as to why they you know the neighbour wouldn't step in and um, that's when I spoke to Jamelia to just really get a sense of you know what are the emotions what might she be thinking why why might she not step in um, and so that, that's kind of how I really wanted to approach it. In fact, when you hear sort of a blended audio on the television where the neighbour is, um, the character is who I actually named Sam, <laughs> um, is sitting and watching television, the blended audio you hear is a speech that Jamelia uh, recorded specifically for us um, that speaks on um, issues affecting black women and brown women and how we need to stand together in solidarity. Um, so yeah, it was nuances that, that like that that I thought was really important. Um, I suppose it's not just because you know, the, uh, the character is brown or the neighbour happens to be black. It's also because of 
what I wanted to say as a filmmaker, as a filmmaker of colour as well, and how I wanted to approach the films that I create. It, it happens to be a story featuring um, a South Asian character and a black character, but it's really a story about two women. And the reason why these two women happen to be women of colour is because I'm a woman of colour and therefore I'm portraying my lived mm -hmm. experience. Um, so yes, I wanted to make subtle nods to these themes that cannot be shied away from, even if they make us feel uncomfortable. But also I didn't want it to dominate the storyline because essentially the reason why these characters are as they are is simply because it's my experience but really it's a story between two women which is why I made it more of an understated rather than um you know more out there sort of more obvious um uh, you know uh portrayal of, of the issues affecting minoritized groups specifically and it's done so brilliantly I think we're teasing this so well I'm sure people <laughs> listening are like I want to see this show me show me or Thank tell you. me how I can watch it but um <laughs> which we will do but I just wanted to come back to like what are your aspirations for it we, you know when you were making it clearly it was a representation of the communities that you were you know working with or you know wanting to help support but how is what's the impact been what's the response been how have people how have people digested it and what how have, how have you felt and what are your hopes for it that goes to both of you really yeah well, I was about to say I'll I, I hand, hand over to Polly because this is <laughs> this is my gift in part as well to the Sharon project so um yeah Polly I guess over to you really um how can this best support you and and what do you see for it and I know what I wish but please please take the reins <laughs> I think uh, so far it's been received really well the emotions from those who've already seen it have been very telling on how powerful it is um, but aspiration wise we'd like to see this film really being used as a conversation starter as an education tool by way of prevention but also empowering women once they see the film to understand and recognize the power they hold in themselves to support other women and I think that's a narrative that's often missing within this area that it takes somebody externally to come and save you it's not about saving it's about supporting and being that active bystander because that's something that we can all do so certainly going forward we'll be looking to make sure the film is as widely distributed as possible and that as many people particularly young people who are our next generation really get sight of this and it and it holds them to to recognize that what they can do yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree. I think this this film has the power to be a, sort of more than just a film. It's a tool. And I think um, we really want to see it used as such a tool. Um, the call to action is very clear at the end of the film. If anything, one could argue that it's an extremely long PSA. Um, <laughs> but um, but um, but um, yes, I think really we you're right, Polly. We really um, we really did want this to elicit a response and the response to be that if you if you see something say something if you see her you can help her um that all of us are constantly surrounded and it's not just abuse in women and girls although this film does focus on that it's abuse in general i think that we live in a world where we're so disconnected and we're so in our own universes and we're often not really vigilant of what's going on outside us or if we are we're taught to kind of stay in our own boxes of existence and not step in because it's overstepping or it's too rude or we must socially distance or whatever the narrative yeah. is i think that that whilst has helped in some ways can be incredibly detrimental to not just mental health but also connection the power of connection is missing i mean this is kind best and i think kindness um it is is often absent in this world where we're so connected and yet everyone appears to be disconnected mm. so i think that yes the call to action is that if you see something perhaps even the smallest thing perhaps to become a bit more aware of it and to know that you really do have the power by saying something to change the course of somebody's life and to allow them to live a completely different existence just by, by that one act of stepping in, reporting it, saying something or perhaps offering a helping hand and saying, can I help? Mm. Are you okay? 
And Polly, how are you envisaging this feeding into the work that the Sharon Project does moving forwards? And what is the outlook for you as a charity? Well, what this film does beautifully is demonstrate the beginning, which is when we, we receive calls from women is when they're in crisis or they've just left. And um, what this film does is shows them the journey we take them on to get to an alternate um, reality, an alternate future. But that takes time and it needs services such as the Sharon Project and other services to make sure that they are there. It's not something that happens overnight. So it beautifully tells the story of the work that we do. Um, and going forward, what we'd really like is to make sure this film is widely distributed. It, we're gonna be using this within our schools and educational programs, as well as within our professionals training. And I think that's what the film does really well is the cross section of different members of the community all can work together towards creating a greater change. So that's certainly the direction we'll be looking to move towards. That sounds fantastic. And again, thank you for everything that you do. It's so inspiring. You're both hugely inspiring. And Suki, full disclosure, this is the second time I've spoken to you on this podcast. So you're the first person that's come back. <laughs> so yes, as an accolade, you can get yeah, another string to your bow, obviously. <laughs> but the um the podcast normally finishes with some quick fire questions. So if you'll indulge me, I'm going to put them both to you if you're ready. OK, Absolutely. right. Here we go. <laughs> So the mantra of women of the future is kindness and collaboration. What does that mean to you in both your personal and professional life? So go to Suki first. Kindness and collaboration. I think um, that no matter where we are, we should always send the ladder back down. No matter how high or low we are, I don't think anyone's different than anyone else. Um, and we all have the ability to help each other. So please work together. I think kindness is a driver um, and collaboration is the key. That's lovely. And Polly? Yeah, um, for me, kindness and collaboration it is encapsulated within, the, within this film. Um, not only did everyone volunteer their time and their skills and their dedication, but actually they did it for a common cause, which was to support the charity and raise awareness of these often hidden issues. So on that level, it really does encapsulate the, the beauty of kindness and collaboration. Um, in addition to that, on a personal level, it means to me looking out for others, um, whether it's a colleague, a peer, um, a friend, or even a neighbor or a stranger on the street, just checking in to make sure somebody's okay. It might not seem like a big thing, but actually it really does make a huge difference. And if that came round full circle to everyone on this planet, perhaps we'll be much kinder and more collaborative world. I like that a lot. Is there anything that scares you, Polly? Let's go to you this time. Okay, well, I thought about this question and <laughs> the answer is the thing that scares me is the thing that gives me hope and that's humanity. What's going on globally and currently and, and in the future is absolutely frightening, particularly for those involved. But it's also an opportunity to show the true nature of humanity and that kindness coming through. So it gives me hope that in adversity, it makes us stronger and it makes us kinder to think about others. It works both ways, doesn't it? Yeah. Suki? Ooh. <laughs> um, what scares me? I, I think, gosh, I, or if I'm truly honest, I think love scares me. Oh. I think love scares me. Yeah, love scares me. Um, because I know that it has the ability to um, help people so, 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 so much. Um, and I try to weld it in the best way I possibly can. I, I ooze it, if anything, a bit too much. <laughs> a bit of That's oozing. <laughs> just, just a nightmare. It's like a love bug over here. Um, but it also, it, also, it also terrifies me because, um, you know, it's something that, I hope I'll find one day, um, which I find within my friends. But I suppose if I'm truly honest, um, yes, I, 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 I guess the quest for love, a human experience, I suppose love is the most beautiful emotion of all. And um, yes, I'd love to find that at some point. Although for now, I'll keep emitting it like a like a pulsar. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Suki. Don't we, <laughs> I'm very surrounded by, by pathos. <laughs> um, what is next on your to-do list? Let's go, Suki. 
Oof, goodness me. Um, I guess we now have a film um, to get out into the world. So please, um, guys, if you're interested, go ahead, watch that, share our message. Um, every part of that makes a difference. That's kind of next on my to-do list, um, I think. And then um, and then hopefully having the opportunity to, to share more um, with the world and continue to kind of share stories as a writer-director. But most importantly, yes to share this film so if you see the link in any part of the content <laughs> surrounding this video please go ahead and watch. can you share the social handles and the website details and all yeah, of that absolutely if anyone wants to learn more about the film or watch the film please go to the social media handle i see her the film um and also the website www.iseehertheFilm.com. fantastic thank you and polly what's on your list um, so what's next? Well, it's back to work for me. Uh, so back to the Sharon Project, supporting more and more women um, and also the covenant to make sure that more employers create workplace opportunities for women affected by abuse. Um, but in addition to that, it's about changing policy and creating enough noise around the, not just the film, but the, the messaging behind it that minoritized victims and survivors' voices need to be heard too. And they need to be implemented much broader than they currently are and to be placed at the heart of everything that's been done on the violence against women and girls agenda. So very much about making a lot of noise in the right places, hopefully to make some good changes for everyone. Amazing. Thank you, Polly, Suki. Enormous thanks to you both for your time in talking with me today. Unfortunately, that is all we've got time for. It's been brilliant speaking to you both. Thank you. And just a quick thank you too to everyone who's helped us to organise KindFest 2023. A remarkable group of volunteers have lovingly created this event for you. Together, we call ourselves Team Kind and you can find out more about us and get involved via our website, which is teamkind.org.uk. Today's festival is packed full of amazing speakers, artists, musicians, and lots, lots more. So please do make sure that you take a look at some of the other brilliant content available. And for more information about the Women of the Future program, their awards and initiatives, you can go to www.womenofthefuture.co.uk.